Welcome to part two of our epic rifle series where we are taking the Savage 12 FV in 6.5 Creedmoor and we are tricking it out to turn this into a long range precision rifle that we can test in a variety of fun challenges, maybe do some coyote hunting or some hog hunting. And then the big culminating event for all of this is going to be a mile shoot. We're gonna see how many times we can hit the big AR500 gong at a mile. And this rifle should be totally up to the task. Today we're going to take a close look at the hardware, the rifle itself, and uh, just kind of describe what the 12FV is and why I chose it for this project. This is a rifle that you've probably seen elsewhere uh, a little earlier in, the, in my channel uh, because I did do a full review on the older 12FV. This one has changed just a little bit. We're gonna take a look at some of those, but you might wanna go back and check out that older video as well. Before we jump in, thank you to patrons of the Destructive Arts for making this project and some of these other projects possible. You guys are buying a lot of the hardware that you're seeing on the bench right here. Some of these are, um, are parts that I'm borrowing from uh, some other manufacturers to kind of test and evaluate for you guys. I know, for example, a lot of you guys are interested in SWFA rifle scopes. So I've been able to check out a couple of those. Uh, but yeah, patrons of the Destructive Arts, if you guys want to pitch in a buck or two a month to help keep the lights on, keep these videos coming, I'll put a link to Patreon around here. And especially thanks to Peter and Sportsman's Guide, who are at the 300 Win Mag and 338 Lapua Mag level. Uh, you guys, thanks a whole lot. Let's start at the top level, answering the question of why I chose the Savage 12 FV over all the other excellent rifles out on the market right now. And I do mean that they're excellent. Really, most of the centerfire rifles and even the rimfires that you can find out there, they are just getting better and better. I know that we had this great big renaissance with all the semi-automatics where the AR-15 just blew up and has turned into all kinds of interesting rifles. But uh, right now, bolt actions are at an all-time high as well you can get some very, very good hardware for very inexpensive prices. And if you there choose a, a Tika or a Remington or whatever, you're gonna be able to get a lot of these same effects. You might wanna follow along with this project anyway to see kinda how we work things because a lot of these techniques will probably apply to your gun as well. But as for the big reasons why I chose the 12FV, partly this is just due to a long history. I have owned a Savage 12FV for a very long time now. This is my personal rifle. I think if I were to keep any of the rifles in my collection, it would be this one. And partly it's just due to how much time I have spent on this. This is an older 12 FV from back in the early 2000s. This guy has a custom stock, not just a custom stock. This is a stock that I built myself along with my father-in-law. And yeah, this thing fits me like a glove. Every part of this fits my every dimension. The cheek piece is exactly where I want it. The vertical grip that you see right here, uh, this just fits my hand perfectly. My finger fits perfectly on the trigger. And then this whole camo job is a Duracoat job that I did a while back. And I'll, I'll link to the, um, the playlist there to show how I do some of my Duracoat camo. This is a very functional rifle, one that's very precise. It has given up some because it, the barrel is a little bit old and it's been probably shot out by now. But the, the old one was a 243. My brother had one in 22 250 that even with our kind of crummy hand loading techniques that we had at the time, uh, we were just shooting bug holes with that thing. And so when it came time to pick out a rifle for this project, I kind of had one already in mind because actually these are well known in the you know kind of gunsmithing industry as a great starting point for an excellent rifle. You get all kinds of goodies on here that we're going to delve into. You get this big heavy long barrel. You get lots of good hardware, a solid action. These are known for precision and if you want to build up a project rifle it's also an inexpensive way to start. Like I mentioned this rifle actually uh, began, I, I bought this for 220 bucks. This is not the normal price. This is stacking a, a discount and a rebate at the same time, both of them for a hundred bucks. This rifle at Cabela's, this and it, Cabela's is the only place you can buy this rifle. This sells for 420 bucks out there. And it used to be that about once or twice a year, they would knock a hundred bucks off the price and you could get it for 320. 
I also stacked on a rebate and I got this for $220 last year. I think a whole bunch of people did the same thing. And if that ever comes back around again, you have to get in on that deal. It is, <laughs> it's just amazing to get this level of hardware for that kind of price. Now, even at the, you know, the 320 or probably the 420 that it's going to stay at for a good long while, this is well worth the price. My original 12 FE that you see right down here, I believe cost around 600 bucks and it has been worth every penny. It's been worth more than that. It has killed so many prairie dogs. It has knocked down so many targets and it's just been a wonderful little uh, kind of donor hardware for that build. And at 420 bucks, this is a steal. Great rifle. Now let's go in, take a look at the parts and see why. The foundation for the Savage 12 FV is the action right here. This is the same action you're going to get on the Model 10, the 16, the 11. Uh, this is a, a very well squared away action. It's simple but very effective. And this is going to differ a little bit from some of the new Model 10s where you get a closed strap across the top and just a little port in the side for uh, ejection and extraction and all that. Uh, this is made so that you can load it from the top because remember that the original stock came with a blind magazine. The only way you're going to load this is if you load from the top. So this does not have that top strap. This is a very well proven action though and it's not going to hold anything back. Moving forward, we have the barrel that's attached to here and this action is short action only because the rounds that you can get this chambered for from the factory are going to be 204 Ruger, 223 Remington, 22 250. We have 6.5 Creedmoor, which this one is right here, and then 308 Winchester. I'm really excited that they brought 308 Winchester back. For the longest time, they had abandoned uh, 308, and I'm really glad that they did bring it back. I think a lot of people will be very happy about that. That should be an excellent hog gun for people that live out in the more uh, kind of prairie states where the shots might be a little bit longer. Uh, this is a 26 inch barrel on all of these models, so you are going to get a lot of velocity, and you can see that it is quite a thick barrel. This is a varmint profile, and it's just kind of a straight taper from about this point all the way out to the muzzle. If there is anything missing on this rifle, apart from the stock that I really do recommend that you swap, it's going to be the lack of any threading out on the barrel. So you're not gonna be able to get your you know, flash height or a muzzle brake uh, suppressors out on there unless you go and get this turned and threaded. Despite that, I mean, this is a great rifle for just going out and shooting as is. And I'd say that's the only thing that maybe some of you guys are going to want to get done. I already mentioned that my rifle is chambered for 6.5 Creedmoor. We had some other excellent options, and if I were just doing varminting, I might go for a 22 250 for example. Great cartridge. But in this case, I need something that's going to stay supersonic for much longer distances and be able to fight the wind a lot better. That really left the options down to 6.5 Creedmoor or 308. I chose 6.5 Creedmoor, and I'm going to explain why in the next video as I do a full comparison of what I think of 6.5 Creedmoor versus 308. It's complicated, so I really recommend that you check that video out. Let's take a close look at the nicely jeweled bolt because this is one of the greatest things about Savage. This floating bolt head right here. You can see that the bolt is not one solid piece of metal like you're going to get with a lot of rifles, especially the Remingtons. This is actually a wholly separate piece, and this has some very cool advantages to it. First off, if you want to swap this bolt head out to something else, if you want to uh, swap your rifle over to something with a little bit of a larger head size, maybe you have a, a 420 in, instead of a 473, or you want to go up to a Magnum or something, uh, like go to 300 WSM, you can swap this bolt head out and you get a whole new face. You don't have to replace the whole bolt. Also, this with its floating bolt head, you can see that these are separate. This can actually wiggle just a little bit when it's locked up next to the barrel right here. That means that if there's any kind of play going on with the bolt, maybe you have some pressure downward, upward, just something is going on. It's not going to affect lockup on the bolt right here. This can really square up inside the action and make this a very accurate rifle. 
a lot of folks are going to spend a lot of time with other rifle types trying to get your tolerances as tight as possible and do all kinds of work on the back side of the lugs here. And in this case with Savage, just right out of the box, you probably will not have to do anything. This floating bolt head is going to take care of you. The stock you see here does not actually belong to this rifle. This is an aftermarket piece. And that also includes the bottom metal and magazines that you, that you see right here and this trigger guard. These are not what originally came with it. Uh, these are all parts that we're going to add on later. These are going to be extra money for you if you want to build in this direction. We're going to take a look at the original stock on the 12FV. This is an ambidextrous plastic stock. And this is probably the first item that you will want to swap out. I highly recommend that you swap this stock on your 12FV if you buy one of these. It's not that there's anything really wrong with the accuracy, like I mentioned in the earlier video. Uh, this is actually a pretty rigid stock and you're probably going to get perfectly good accuracy out of it. The reasons why you're going to want to swap it are mostly going to be for comfort and just for making sure that if there is any flex in this stock, it's not going to mess up your accuracy. I have run into some of these plastic stocks where if you load them up on a bipod, uh, you can take a half inch gun and turn it into a six inch gun or even a 12 inch gun. And I'm not exaggerating. This has happened to me before. Like I say, this one probably won't do that. You can, you know, test in your own situation, but probably the best reason to swap this is going to be, well, right here, you can uh, extend this, get rid of the blind magazine and put in something awesome like we have back here. But then Mostly it comes down to the grip right here. Having this swept back grip on a prone rifle is awful, very uncomfortable, especially with long sessions of shooting. If you plan to be out for hours shooting varmints or waiting for that, uh, that, that coyote or something to come across, this is going to be awful. You want vertical, get a good vertical grip. It's gonna help you out a lot. Also the comb back here, while it is set up to be ambidextrous and easy for righties and lefties to use, this is one where it's going to sit kind of low and you're just not going to get a good cheek weld. There are other rifles like this at one that are e either going to have adjustable parts or they're just going to be set up a little bit different overall so that you're going to get a better view through the scope. You can get a real cheek weld instead of a chin weld. I mentioned in video number one that I've already taken this rifle out and shot it, and I'm already very impressed with its performance. I was shooting hand loads that weren't even tuned up for this rifle, and I was making very consistent impacts out at about 400 yards on a little steel popper that I have from Champion. Uh, yeah, this, this rifle is going to be the business when we get it all finished out, when we get the right parts on here, when we get the, uh, especially the ammunition squared away, this is going to be capable of all kinds of wonderful and terrible feats. Make sure that you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you guys around. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks a bunch for your patronage.